Well, I hope you're keeping well. Uh, I hope you had a good Easter weekend. And uh, I thought that today I would take a few minutes to reflect on one of the final stories that we find in Luke's Gospel. It actually takes place, Luke tells us, on the evening of Easter Day. And it's all about a walk which Jesus takes with two of his disciples. And to me, this is a particularly beautiful story. It's an encounter which I find uh, very inspiring uh, and moving. I think that one of the reasons I love this story so much is because of the reminder we have here of how Jesus is just really personal. Because if you think about it for a moment, this is a day which has begun with the most uh, astonishing and uh, most world-changing of events. Jesus has been raised from the dead. Death is defeated. The, the, the promises of God have been fulfilled. And you think, shouldn't he now be uh, doing something with a bit more fanfare? Shouldn't he have arranged some grand gathering back in Jerusalem, some kind of dramatic uh, revealing of himself before a large crowd, maybe back at the temple. I mean, isn't this a moment when you would want to extract, you know, the maximum effect in terms of publicity? And yet, this is not what Jesus does. Instead, Jesus is walking down a road seven miles from Jerusalem with two of his disciples. It's such a touching scene. It just feels natural and, uh, and intimate. Now, you can read this story in Luke 24. It's actually quite a long passage. It runs from verses 13 through to 35. So I'm not going to read all of it to you. You might want to hit the pause button at this moment and look at it yourself. And if you don't want to do that, then I'll, I'll tell you the gist of the story. And then I'll read just a couple of verses from near the end. And Luke starts by telling us about these two figures. One is called Cleopas. We don't know the name of the other. We, we think she might be his wife. And they are walking along the road to Emmaus. And they are grieving for Jesus after his death. Uh, and it seems he sort of sidles up to them at this moment, comes alongside them and asks them what they're talking about. But, but they don't recognise him. Luke tells us they were kept from recognising him, him. So Jesus asks them about what's on their minds. And they tell him about how they follow Jesus, uh, the hope they have placed in him. And they are clearly struggling to come to terms with what has happened over the last couple of days in Jerusalem. Uh, interestingly, they also talk about the reports they've heard uh, of the women who say he's alive. They don't seem to be convinced. So they're, they're still at this place of, of feeling all is lost. And Jesus then pushes back on what they've said. He, he challenges them. He, he says... Don't you realise it was necessary for the Messiah to suffer in this way? Don't you understand? Uh, and then we're told about how, as they walk along, he explains to them how everything in the scriptures has been pointing to him. What a thought. What a thought. Oh, oh to have Jesus give you a whistle-stop tour of the Old Testament. Oh, to have Bible class with Jesus. But it seems that this is what he does as they walk along this road. And then we're told about how they get to the village of Emmaus and as it's evening, this couple encouraged Jesus to stay with them, to have a meal with them. Uh, and then Luke tells us what happens next. And I will read to you just a couple of verses, like I said earlier. So this is Luke 24 and I'm reading verses 30 through to 32. When he was at the table with them, he took bread gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognised him, and he disappeared from their sight. And they asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? 
It's a remarkable moment. Do you notice how the language Luke uses is actually language we use today at our communion tables in churches. He took bread, he gave thanks, he broke it, he gave it to them. I'm not sure that they actually have a communion meal, but it seems to, to hint at how there is something very precious, very holy in this moment. It's a moment of incredible insight. There's this sort of unveiling. Do you remember how early in the story Luke says their eyes were closed, they weren't able to see who Jesus was, and now there is this moment of awareness, they actually recognise him, and it's only possible when their eyes are opened. You know, there are some things we can't discover for ourselves, we can't work them out for ourselves, they only come to us through a revelation from God. And this seems to be one of those moments of wonderful, really intense awareness. And yet he disappears from their sight. Has that ever happened to you? Uh, you know, have you ever had that sort of experience, that sense of how, my goodness, you come to awareness of how God is actually here and he's present and he's right alongside you, but it's almost as if the moment you realise he's there, he's, he's, he's gone. It's very precious. It's such an intense moment. Maybe we can't bear the intensity for too long. Maybe it's just God breaking in for a fleeting moment. But then there's something else which happens here. Because they don't just have this awareness of the moment of Jesus being present to them in the here and now. Do you remember the other thing that they say? How they then talk about what had been happening hours ago when they were walking down the road. And they look at each other and they say, why are not our hearts burning within us? And it seems that the moment they have this awareness of Jesus being present to them in that moment, that they're able to look back and they think about what happened earlier. And they remember that in a different way as well. They, they, they see a bigger picture now. Seems that at the time that they, they, they didn't feel particularly conscious of, of Jesus and, and, and that it was actually him and how he was at work. But, but now they look back and they think, wow, that, that was quite significant, wasn't it? it he really was near. We, we felt our hearts burning. And, and I wonder, have you ever had that sort of experience yourself? I can think of some occasions when uh, I've listened to a sermon and uh, maybe what a preacher was saying just seems quite matter of fact or, or conversational. And then I look back on it later and it's almost as if I have this, this moment of realisation. God, you were saying something really important to me then. Or, or, or I can think of times when I was going through some difficult experiences and it just felt as if all I could do was keep going from one moment to the next, from one day to the next. And I didn't have much of a sense at all of where God was or what he was doing because I was just stuck in survival mode. And yet I then came to see later on and down the line how God had been with me. And there were things I was just seeing as coincidence. That I then came to recognise and believe to be him. He was at work. He, he was there in, in what I was going through or what we were going through. And I wonder if this is how it is for a lot of us. Because sometimes if we're going through some kind of challenging experience or, or situation, we find it hard to really understand what's going on and how he's at work. And what he wants to say to us. I wonder if there are times when we're just too close to actual events. And to get some proper perspective. You have to be able to step back. Uh, and you have to be able to put some distance between yourself. And what was going on. And, and actually you can't even really make sense of it yourself. Because you need God to help you process that and really make you aware of what was going on in your heart and what he was doing in your heart and in your life and in the life of other people around you at that time. But if you take time to reflect, 
And if you look back and if God gives you that insight, you can hear him speaking to you and you can have that moment when you realise, no, he was there. He was holding me and he was watching over me. And I can see now that what I saw as coincidence was his provision. I can see that what seemed like a chance meeting was, it was his gift to me. I can see that that person who appeared out of random, as if from nowhere, was who he wanted to speak into my life at that moment. I can see that that person was his gift to me at that time. I don't know if it maybe seems to you at times as we're going through this period of lockdown, you know, there isn't much we can we can do, which I think is quite hard for us. I think that uh, as evangelicals, we like to be doing, we like to be getting on with stuff. And when we can't do, we wonder, how can God be at work? How can God be, be doing stuff in our lives? But actually, there is stuff we can do. Uh, we can be pausing. Uh, we can be praying, we can be reflecting, we can be remembering. Maybe we can be using this space to look back and invite God in and show us, you know, what have you been doing? What have you been doing in my heart? What have you been doing in my life? What have you been doing in my church or my street? Uh, and so maybe this is one thing you can be doing this week or in the coming weeks. Maybe just take time to pause, take time to pray, take time to look back and just invite God in and ask him to help you to see and perceive what have you been doing in my life recently? And how might that awareness of you change what you want me to do? in the coming days. So let me pray for you. I pray, my friends, that you would know God near in this ongoing season of lockdown, this season which has become, uh, for so many of us, one of enforced stillness and silence uh, and solitude. I pray God would be real to you in the present but also speaking to you as you look backwards and forwards and that his word to you about how he has always been there, how he was at work even when we didn't realise, might be a means of you being renewed and being encouraged and comforted and being like Cleopas and his wife, people who go off and witness and tell others and encourage others so that his gift to you becomes a means of you being a gift to them. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless, friends. I miss you. I continue to pray for you. And I look forward to talking again soon and seeing you soon as well. Bye for now.